Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I want to uh, yield my time to Mr. Reed, who's been really focused, laser focused on this issue, doing a lot for the state of New York. Uh, so I want to uh, yield my time to him, if that's okay. Surely. Well, I, I thank uh, Mr. Nunes for, uh, for yielding his time to me and thank you, Chairman, for uh, convening this committee hearing today. And as indicated, uh, this has been a priority of our office uh, since the beginning of this crisis, the, the nursing home situation. And, and I will just tell you, uh, what we really need to be focusing on today is that th there needs to be accountability for the, and leadership and action for the past mistakes that happened uh, during the course of the pandemic uh, crisis. But most importantly, that as we move forward, we must protect the loss of life uh, from occurring in the future like we've seen in particular in New York State. Uh, since this virus first hit our shores, we have known our nation's parents and grandparents were particularly at risk. While many states, 45 in fact, Mr. Chairman, chose to follow CDC guidance, CMS guidance regarding nursing home regulations, a small group of governors made fatal errors that directly exposed the elderly to COVID-19 and placed our most vulnerable population in harm's way. Governor Andrew Cuomo in my home state of New York enacted a series of disastrous policies that directly led to the deaths of thousands of our state's parents and grandparents. We know this virus is not going away anytime soon. If we are to ensure our nation's parents and grandparents are protected moving forward, we need to fully understand why Governor Cuomo and the four other governors ordered COVID-19 positive seniors to be forced into nursing homes, exposing the entire nursing home population and staff to death. Mr. Chairman, I'm asking, uh, this is a copy of the March 25th executive order uh, from Governor Cuomo, which I ask unanimous consent be included in the record. Thank you, I, I, I assume that's a yes, because I didn't hear you, Mr. Chairman, it was muted, but thank you. I, I find sure. it uh, particularly- It's, it's uh, without objection. Thank you. I find it particularly important to submit this for the record, because as you indicated in your opening remarks, uh, Chairman, transparency is important. And this order has been deleted from the public records on the internet for the state of New York. I, and, and I want to also note, Mr. Chairman, immediately after Governor Cuomo imposed this order to force COVID-19 positive patients into nursing homes, the Society for Post-Acute and Long-Term Care sent a direct written letter warning to the governor and stated, and I quote, the mandate was overreaching, not consistent with science, and beyond, beyond all, not in the least consistent with patient safety principles, and particularly indicated that the order caused significant risk of fatality to nursing home patients. So I would also like to seek unanimous consent to enter into the record the March 26th, the day after the March 25th executive order uh, letter of the society. Without objection. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Instead of working together, with us, the medical community, and advocates on solutions, Governor Cuomo is focusing on lying to the American public as evidenced by independent fact checkers who ruled the governor did not follow federal guidelines even though he said it was the fault of the Trump administration. Even now, he continues to refuse to take responsibility for the state's errors. It is offensive to those who have lost a parent or a grandparent and who just want answers like myself. Our investigation in this committee should serve as the foundation of future nursing home policies and decision making. The result should be a comprehensive strategy, Mr. Chairman, to keep our nation's parents and grandparents safe from what I fear will be a return to a crisis level of nursing home deaths in the fall as the virus potentially reemerges. Congress must ensure that state leaders follow the proper best practices tailored to meet the specific needs of the community moving forward. We should be fighting for people like Donna, who reached out from our district to our office, who recently shared her story with us after failing to hear from a single New York official in response to her plea for help. She is extremely concerned about her dear Aunt Rita, who has been isolated and unable to interact with her family for months. And as Donna said, I'm pleading with you to address this. We cannot have a one-size-fits-all approach. We need someone who cares enough to speak up for those who can't. We should also stand with Doreen from our district, who has been unable to see her 95-year-old mother for weeks and has described the whole situation as a nightmare for 
the family. The American people need our help, and they are relying on us to act because they have lost faith in their state's competence and ability to roll up their sleeves and put a plan of action in place. And I join with the witnesses here today that say we owe it to our parents and grandparents to do better. But most important, we shall not cast blame. We should demand justice, accountability, and take action that makes sure that tens of thousands of seniors do not face the death sentence that they faced in New York State in regards to the March 25th order sending COVID-19 positive seniors into nursing homes without any scientific or data to support such an egregious policy decision uh, during the course of this pandemic.